I'm reviewing over 70 Gravitrax add-ons from 7 Etsy shops. Each shop owner sent me parts of their choosing for these reviews. I evaluate each shop's overall 3D print quality and then review each part individually. Parts get scored in four key areas. First, quality. This evaluates the parts fit, operation, build quality, and ease of use. Second, utility. How useful is this part in a marble run? Does it add new capability to Gravitrax that you didn't have before? Third, fun. This is the part's coolness factor and is my opinion of how much fun the part will add to your marble runs. Lastly, uniqueness. This doesn't measure how good the part is, but whether the part is an original design that you can't get anywhere else. A generic design that is sold by several Etsy shops gets a lower uniqueness score. Hi, I'm Chris. Join me on my quest to find the world's best 3D printed add-ons for Gravitrax Marble Runs. In this video, I review Etsy shop Kugelbahn DE. What do these parts do? Which are best? In the interest of full disclosure, please be aware that I received these parts for free from shop owner Stefan for the purposes of this review. Today, we're going to examine seven parts from the Kugelbahn DE shop. Rail cannon, flex tube extension, base plate connectors, marble catcher, marble kicker, offset tile, and transfer magnets. Stefan actually has two storefronts where you can buy his parts. There is his Etsy store, but you will find even more parts on his web store than those reviewed in this video. So be sure to visit his shop to see everything he offers. Stefan has also produced two Gravitrax construction book ebooks in German and English available on his website. He let me take a look inside, and here's my take on them. Think of these ebooks as a master class in Gravitrax Marble Run construction. They contain step-by-step -step building instructions for various tracks. But these aren't just tracks to pass the time. Each one teaches you a new trick or technique which will make you a more accomplished Gravitrax builder. And some of these techniques are quite sophisticated. There are techniques in there that I didn't know about. The books are detailed and self-explanatory, so you will have no problem following the instructions. First, let's take a look at the overall quality of the 3D prints coming out of the Kugelbahn DE shop. The parts are very, very good. There is some light ghosting on the sides, but it is barely noticeable. The overhangs are good, and support attachment points are fairly clean. There is no sign of over-extrusion or under-extrusion, and no noticeable elephant's foot. Print bed surfaces are smooth, and top surfaces show no gooping or stringing, which is rare. I found some very slight layer inconsistency on one part, but it didn't affect the part's function. Overall, the print quality coming out of the Kugelbahn store is very near the top of the pack. I think you'll have no concerns at all with the print quality of anything you buy from this store. I'm giving Kugelbahn DE 4 stars for overall print quality. Now let's dive in for a look at the parts. The first part I'm reviewing from the Kugelbahn DE shop is the rail cannon. This is a small piece with a magnet inside that clips onto any of the gray Gravitrax rails. It acts as a lightweight magnetic cannon that can be flexibly placed on a rail. Up front, you need to realize before you buy this add-on, don't expect the rail cannon to be a movable version of the Gravitrax magnetic cannon. It doesn't have the same kind of acceleration. It's a gentle accelerator. Let's talk about the need for this part. When I think of Gravitrax marble accelerators, first I think of the Gravitrax magnetic cannon. What I love about the magnetic cannon is it requires no activation energy at all to use. The incoming marble can have almost no momentum and the magnet will pull it in and shoot the cannon. But there's a challenge to using the magnetic cannon. I liken the magnetic cannon to a wild horse. It packs a punch of power that is explosive and at times difficult to tame. You need to carefully design what comes after the cannon or the marble can go careening off the track, unable to contain all that wild energy. So when I want something softer, I use the Gravitrax hammer, but the incoming marble must overcome the hammer's activation energy to set it in motion. If the incoming marble doesn't have enough momentum, the hammer won't work. 
So there's a capability gap in between the magnetic cannon and the hammer. We'd like a marble accelerator that is mild like the hammer, but that requires no activation energy like the magnetic cannon. That's what the rail cannon does. Its magnet is not nearly as strong as the magnetic cannon, so it provides a gentle push that is similar to the hammer. Actually, the hammer's push is even a little stronger than the rail cannon. But unlike the hammer, the rail cannon will work with very little speed of the incoming marble. You can see that the rail cannon's acceleration is nice and gentle. A welcome departure from the untamed explosion of the Gravitrax magnetic cannon. But because the rail cannon magnet isn't as strong, it can't power a marble up three to three and a half height tiles like the magnetic cannon. I couldn't even get it to shoot up one and a half height tiles, but it can raise a marble up one height tile. And if the incoming marble has some extra momentum, one and a half height tiles is possible. The rail cannon can be used near the entrance of a rail or near the end of a rail to give that extra oomph needed to get the marble to the top. The rail cannon attaches very securely to the rail. I'd say the fit is almost too tight. At first I felt like I was going to bend the rail when installing the cannon. Make sure you press the rail right next to the rail cannon. Don't try to peel the rail off from a distance. With some effort and wiggling the part, you can slide the rail cannon along the rail. Here's my scorecard rating for the rail cannon. For quality, I give it four stars. I think its fit is perhaps slightly too tight, but otherwise its design, build quality, and operation is very good and error free. For utility, I give it 5 stars. There is nothing else that works like this in the Gravitrax universe. You can use the rail cannon in lots of places to keep a track going. And the nice thing is, this add-on is flexible enough to use anywhere along a gray track. You don't need to redesign your entire track to use it. Just add one of these where the marble is stalling out. Also because of its small size, it takes up very little space on the track and in the storage bin. For fun, I give it four stars. It's not a flashy extension, but I think its effect on the marble is attention getting and fun because it gives a somewhat unexpected motion boost. For uniqueness, I give it five stars. There are lots of 3D printed magnetic cannon designs out there, but one that clips to Gravitrax rails is unique. The second part I'm reviewing from the Kugelbahn DE shop is the flex tube extension. This is a set of two tubes that each extend the vertical length of a Gravitrax flex tube by three and a half tiles. Normally the flex tube drops a marble three and a half height tiles. The flex tube extension doubles that height to seven height tiles, which is the height of a Gravitrax pillar. Obviously you need to also own a Gravitrax flex tube in order to use the flex tube extension. To assemble, you separate the two halves of the flex tube and place the extension in between. The flex tube extension grabs snugly to the top half of the flex tube, but one of the two extensions I tested allowed the bottom half of the flex tube to spin loosely inside the extension. The flex tube extension seems to work pretty well. The marble comes out of the bottom of the flex tube with enough momentum to carry it back up two height tiles. I could not get it to go up any higher. I tried putting two flex tube extensions together, but they are not designed to stick together. Nonetheless, if you're careful, you can get two of them to stack. Just remember that the assembly is loose. The flex tube extension will also sit very loosely on top of a Gravitrax lifter. This lets the top half of the flex tube be used as an alternative top for the Gravitrax lifter. If you push the lifter button too hard, it will launch two marbles, but a gentle press will launch one marble at a time. The flex tube extension can also be supported on top of a Gravitrax Vortex for a marble drop. Here's my scorecard rating for the flex tube extension. For quality, I give it three and a half stars. I think its fit could have been tweaked just a bit to capture it more snugly onto the bottom half of the flex tube, making it easier to use. For utility, I give it four stars. There are other ways to get a marble down seven tiles, including the more visually interesting Gravitrax Spiral. However, since the spiral can only make a marble exit at 60, 180, and 300 degrees offset from its entrance, the flex tube with flex tube extension is more flexible, as it can output the marble in any direction. For fun, I give it two stars. It just doesn't seem too exciting to have a marble falling down a tube in which you can't see it. 
I would have given it a higher score if it had slots in its walls that allowed you to glimpse marbles as they fall, similar to the slots in the tunnel set pieces. That may be something the shop owner can add in the future. For uniqueness, I give it two stars. Even though this design is exclusive to the Kugelbahn DE shop, you can do the same thing with the clear tubes that come in the Gravitrax lifter. The lifter tubes are the same height, and unlike the flex tube extension, they clamp onto each other. It's also nice to see the marbles inside the clear tube. However, the lifter tubes do not clamp onto the flex tube ends as firmly as the 3D printed flex tube extension. But with some care and perhaps some clear tape, the lifter tubes will do everything the flex tube extension does. The third part I'm reviewing from the Kugelbahn DE shop is the base plate connector. These come in a set of four, and together they allow you to place a Gravitrax base plate on top of height tiles or pillars, which enables multi-level building. And this may have an advantage over the clear platforms that are normally used for multi-level building. Clear platforms have holes that nothing in the Gravitrax universe sticks to. Everything that you place on a clear platform sits there loosely, which leads to a whole host of challenges when placing flips, scoops, hammers, and other action tiles. And because nothing sits firmly on a clear platform, if you accidentally bump the platform, everything falls apart. Gravitrax base plates, however, were engineered with holes that grab onto Gravitrax parts, so you might call them the Gravitrax platforms. Okay, bad joke. But you can use the grabbiness of the raised base plates to do things you can't with the clear platforms, like build upside down. What you do is place the base plate on top of height tiles or pillars and then place the base plate connector on top. This locks the base plate to the height tiles beneath but also allows you to build on top of that connector. The base plate connector fits very snugly into the base plate and you can see that it extends below the base plate to interface with the height tiles underneath. The base plate connectors fit very snugly and it takes a bit of effort to remove them. Of course, the base plate connector can also be used with the small base plates from the light and game Gravitrax sets, which could help you build some pretty interesting towers. The base plate connector doesn't grip the height tile below it nearly as tightly as it grips the base plate, but that's a limitation due to Ravensburger's design of Gravitrax. Instead of designing consistent size holes for Gravitrax pieces to fit into, they designed the base plate holes to be smaller than those of the height tiles. That's why the cardboard base plates grip pieces so much more tightly than height tiles do. I find that the base plate connectors are well designed. They grip well onto tiles placed on top of them. And like I said, there is no way they can be designed to grip the height tiles below them because then they wouldn't fit through the smaller holes of the base plate. Here's my scorecard rating for the base plate connector. For quality, I give it five stars. These connectors fit well and are straightforward to use. They really couldn't be any better designed to do the job that they do. For utility, I give it five stars. For anyone who wants to build with elevated base plates, these are just super useful and will make your project stable. For fun, I give it four stars. Even though the part itself is super boring, what it enables you to do by building on stable elevated base plates, that is fun and exciting. For uniqueness, I give it four stars. Even though you can glue together base plate punch outs to mount base plates on top of pillars, doing so makes that spot unavailable for building on top. So the base plate connector adds the ability to build on top of those spots. The fourth part I'm reviewing from the Kugelbahn DE shop is the marble catcher. This is one of my favorite parts from this shop. I've never really liked the Gravitrax catcher insert when you first start building with Gravitrax, this piece is shown in starter set sample tracks as a ramp that catches a ball falling from the free fall insert or the vortex. I started to use it but found that it often failed. The marble would fall on the catcher and then stall at the exit. The reason why? The catcher insert is not a true ramp. It has a small section at its exit that is flat. And as an engineer, I can't fathom why a part like this even exists. It's designed to fail. Depending on the track design, a marble can land on the catcher insert with sideways momentum. Instead of rolling out of the catcher, the marble will oscillate back and forth sideways, sometimes stopping on the flat portion on the bottom of the catcher. It's an unfortunate oversight. The marble catcher is an insert that has three benefits over the catcher insert. 
First, it's a lot larger so marbles don't fall between the ramp and the edge of the tile like on the catcher insert. Second, there is no flat spot in the marble catcher. It is a continuously sloped ramp all the way to the exit. This means no matter how slow the marble enters the marble catcher and no matter where the marble settles inside, gravity is going to tend to drive the marble out. This is the way the catcher insert should have been designed. Third, the marble catcher has a consistent slope and behavior for a marble entering the marble catcher from any direction. The Gravitrax catcher is more susceptible to failure if the marble is traveling at an angle to the catcher exit. The marble catcher's ramp surface is very high quality. It's about as good as it gets in 3D printed parts. However, the marble catcher's design doesn't have lips like the Gravitrax catcher insert. So if a marble enters the marble catcher with too much momentum, it may just roll in and out the other side. This is especially true for high drops that are off center. And in such cases, the Gravitrax catcher might perform better than the marble catcher. The marble catcher design has more of a gentle curved U shape, which means a marble dropping onto one side can roll down the bottom of the marble catcher and back out the other side. In this case, the edge stops of the regular Gravitrax catcher might be helpful. One issue I found with the design was the fit of the catcher into the Gravitrax base tile. Its fit was just too tight. I mean, it's really difficult to insert, and I had to use a knife to pry it out afterwards. I gave this feedback to Stefan, the shop owner, and he is planning to improve the fit so that the marble catcher is more easily inserted and removed. Here's my scorecard rating for the marble catcher. For quality, I give it four stars. It's really a well-designed, easy to use piece. The only reason it didn't get a five is because its fit is too tight. But if the shop owner fixes this, I'd give it a five. For utility, I give it five stars. I think you should consider replacing some of your Gravitrax catchers with marble catchers. I really do. That's how useful I think it is. The only time you'd want to continue using the Gravitrax catchers is in situations where its edge stops would help control the marble from rolling out of the catcher. For fun, I give it five stars. It's fun to watch the marble roll inside the bowl-shaped catcher, then settle down and roll out. For uniqueness, I give it five stars. I mean, why hasn't anyone else thought of this? It's such an obvious need with the unpredictable nature of the Gravitrax catcher insert, but nobody really did anything about it until now. The fifth part I'm reviewing from the Kugelbahn DE shop is the Marble Kicker. A caveat up front with this part, you need the tunnel extension set to use this insert. It requires the base tile from the straight tunnel piece. The marble kicker add-on is an insert that acts like the splash pad, but instead of kicking off three marbles, the marble kicker sends two marbles in opposite directions. One marble is placed on the insert and the second marble falls from above. Because of the first marble's placement, the falling marble hits it at an offset, and the two balls are sent in opposite directions. You can see that it has an indent for placing a marble in the insert. As already mentioned, it can't be used with the regular base tile in Gravitrax starter sets. It needs the base tile from the straight tunnel piece. It is a tight fit. What's cool about this insert is that the exits are sloped, using gravity to power the marbles out of the exit. This is an improvement over the splash insert, which has a flat exit that sometimes causes marbles to stall. The marbles are accelerated out of the marble kicker, leaving with some speed which should really be the design goal of any marble launching device in the Gravitrax system. But the real question is, can it be used like the Gravitrax splash pad, not only launching by marbles dropping from above, but also rolling into one of the side exits? And the answer is yes, but the marble kicker acts more like the Gravitrax color swap, while the splash pad acts more like a marble doubler. And actually, the marble kicker is much easier to trigger than the color swap. In my test here, the color swap required the marble to start at a height of two and a half height tiles, but the marble kicker only required a height of one height tile, so it's much easier to actuate. But of course, the color changer is self-resetting, whereas the marble kicker must be reset after each use, unless you increase the speed of the incoming marble. Upping the height to two and a half height tiles, the marble kicker works just like the color swap and in either direction. 
And the benefit of the marble kicker is that sloped output ramp, which gives the outgoing marble some momentum, something the color swap does not do. You can see the marble kicker's indentation is off-center. That means the ball in that indentation will always leave the tile in that direction. The dropped ball will always leave in the opposite direction. You can see the marble kicker can sometimes misfire if the ball is dropped from too high. This is a problem with both the vortex and free fall insert. So a short drop is recommended to ensure it works. Notice that the marble kicker design has two sidewalls that help capture the dropped marble and direct it down the exit ramp. Here's my scorecard rating for the marble kicker. For quality, I give it five stars. It's easy to use, fits well, and interfaces very well with Gravitrax marble. For utility, I give it four stars. It is useful, but you may not have a need for it and just stick with the splash pads. For fun, I give it three stars. I see it more as a utility piece than a piece that's fun. For uniqueness, I give it five stars. It's something I've never seen before and I don't think the idea would have occurred to me. It's an original piece. The sixth part I'm reviewing from the Kugelbahn DE shop is the offset tile. This piece allows you to place any Gravitrax tile halfway between spaces. I couldn't really think of any other good use for it besides its intended use, which is to fine tune the placement of trampolines. One of the challenges of doing fancy things with Gravitrax trampolines is getting the marble to land in just the right place after the bounce. There are green angled tiles that can be used to angle the trampoline, but they give limited preset options. For example, to get the marble to bounce off a trampoline sideways over to the next row, you have to initiate a sideways bounce and not only get the side to side motion right, but also the forward motion just right. Sometimes it would be nice if there were more options to make a more gradual transition between rows, and that's what the offset tile was intended to do. It clips onto the bottom of a trampoline, and then that trampoline can be placed halfway between spaces. Maybe you could use the offset tile to build a pyramid, too. The offset tile cannot be used with a vortex because the support member blocks the ball. It would be interesting to see what is possible if that part was modified to allow a ball to pass through the middle. The part actually sticks pretty good to base plates and double balconies. It just doesn't stick well to single tiles because its fit depends on wedging the part between two openings. And the wedge works so well, it can actually grip onto both the large clear platform and the small clear platform, which is something that no genuine Gravitrax part can do. The small clear platform has slightly smaller holes than the large clear platform, so some Gravitrax parts, like the double balcony and pillar, can grip the small clear platform, but none of them grip the large clear platform. Here's my scorecard rating for the offset tile. For quality, I give it four stars. It's just a bit too difficult to get it off after placing it on a base plate. For utility, I give it three stars. It is useful for trampolines, but not much else. For fun, I give it three stars. Trampolines are super fun, but this is more of a support piece. For uniqueness, I give it five stars. This is an original piece that you won't find elsewhere. The seventh and final part I'm reviewing from the Kugelbahn DE shop is the transfer magnet. This is a kit which allows you to add a self-resetting function to your Gravitrax transfers, allowing you to use them multiple times in a single marble run. Please note that this add-on involves a modification of attaching a small magnet onto the transfer base. You can make the modification permanent by using a drop of superglue or opt for a reversible modification by sticking the magnet with tape or a drop of silicone. The transfer magnet mod consists of these small green magnets which clip onto the transfer wand and small magnets which get attached to the transfer base. The green clips fit too tightly to clip over the side of the transfer wand you're going to want to remove the wand from the base and then insert the clip carefully over the end of the wand. It's a very tight fit, so be very careful not to damage the wand. Then when the small magnet is attached onto the base, it will repel the wand back into its starting position after use. To install the small magnet, I decided to make a small mark on the tile where the magnet should go, but you could also just glue it between the first set of arrows. To determine which side of the magnet goes up, I let the free magnet stick onto the clip magnet, then put a dot on the side of the free magnet that had been stuck to the clip. This marked side then becomes the side to place 
face down onto the base. Then the base magnet will repel the clip. Comparing the operation of transfers with and without the transfer magnet add-on, you can see that the marble goes slightly faster and farther on the unmodified transfer. The transfer magnets actually slow the marble down, resisting its forward progress. When using the same starting height, marbles that make it through the unmodified transfers may not make it through the transfers with the magnet mod. I had to add three additional height tiles to accelerate the marble fast enough to make it through three consecutive transfers with magnets. Doing a test with marbles at the same height, the marble retains more forward speed with the unmodified transfers than the magnetized transfers. So realize that when using the transfer magnets, you're making a trade-off. You're trading away some of the marble's forward momentum, but gaining the ability to use the transfer multiple times in the same marble run. I'm putting a link up in the corner to a video of a Gravitrax track that incorporates this transfer magnet add-on using the transfers multiple times in a single marble run. Here's my scorecard rating for the transfer magnet. For quality, I give it four stars. Its operation and fit are good. I just think the fit of the piece on the wand is just a little too tight and you have to be careful not to bend the wand. For utility, I give it four stars. It is useful and reliable for turning the transfer into a self-resetting piece. For fun, I give it four stars. If you can use the same transfer twice in the same marble run, that's twice the fun. For uniqueness, I give it three stars. A similar design is available on Thingiverse, which also includes a printable template for positioning the magnet on the base for gluing. That wraps up my review of Gravitrax add-ons from Etsy shop Kugelbahn DE. Tell me in the comments which one was your favorite. Remember, while some of these parts can be found on Etsy, even more can be found in the shop owner's web store. Subscribe and click the notification bell to be notified when I release other Etsy shop reviews of Gravitrax add-ons. To see all the Etsy shops I've reviewed so far, click this playlist.